everybody, it's John from Seattle Coffee Gear. I'm back in the commercial kitchen. Today we're doing another video in our installment about latte art. We're gonna walk you through some different designs. The last video we did in the series was the heart, and today we're going to do the rosetta. Um, this is sometimes the first design after or before uh, that people will learn. Uh, usually when you're starting out, it kind of looks like a fern or a leaf. Uh, but once you get it figured out and it's like fully filling the cup, fully developed, it's a rosetta and it'll look pretty cool. Um, usually this pour is done without any breaks, meaning you're not pouring and stopping, pouring and stopping. You're just kind of pouring the whole time uh, and doing it that way. The start of it is going to use a pretty similar technique to the heart. Uh, so if you have questions about kind of the basics of everything, make sure you check out that video as well. Uh, we're not going to go quite as into depth in this video as we did into that on like the very basic stuff, but we'll do a quick recap once we join it, jump in. So let's get started. I'll uh, grab a cup and some water to start and we'll go from there. All right. Last time we were here, we had a clear cup that we were using and I was talking about um, pouring into the deep end of the espresso and tipping your cup and all that. So if you want more details on that, what it looks like, check out the video on the heart pattern because uh, we're not going to talk about that today. So for this one, we're going to pretend that we have our espresso in the cup uh, by way of the water uh, and then we're going to pour into the deepest part kind of in the center of the cup there. Pour right in there, fill it till it's about halfway full and stop. And then you're gonna take your pitcher and aim for about the middle of the cup. Uh, if you think about, if you have a handled cup, if you think about the handle making kind of a cross section in the cup, that's what you're gonna be aiming for. So when I'm like this, my handle creates a cross section and I'm aiming for this spot right here in the center of the cup when I'm starting my pour. And also what I'm going to do is if I have a pitcher with a handle, I'm going to make sure my handle is perpendicular to the handle on the cup. That way I'm going to have a nice symmetrical pour that will be centered in the cup. So my cup is halfway full now of espresso mixed with milk, so I'm going to take my pitcher and before I start pouring, I'm gonna get really close. So this is tipped over, so then my liquid is to the edge of the cup, and I have only enough liquid in here to make this cup completely full. That means that I can tilt this pitcher further without it actually pouring, so I can get closer to the cup without pouring. That's gonna give me better contrast. So I'll get close. And then once you start your pour, you're going to wiggle the pitcher and go out. I don't know why I held it like that. I don't normally do that. So the biggest thing that you're going to have to figure out during this pour, set that back here, grab another pitcher, is the wiggle. Uh, because that has a lot to do with it. So it's kind of like a rocking motion like this. It takes a little bit of time to develop. Um, sometimes when you're starting out, you're going to want to hold it super tight and be like really rigid with it. But you really want to try and let the pitcher do some of the work for you um, and just kind of let it rock back and forth. So you're adding a little bit of uh, some resistance, but you're not controlling every which way it's going. Um, if you've ever played the drums or you're a drummer, this will be more of a natural movement because you know like with a drumstick, you're hitting something with it and the stick's doing a lot of the work for you. So it's the same idea with the pitcher. Um, you're just letting the pitcher do it, do its own thing and uh, you're not tightly controlling it, um, but you're also not just doing this because that's not gonna work either. So. You want to hold a pretty good grip like this, like this. Some people hold it like that. Some people hold it like that. I hold it right like this uh, and just kind of wiggle back and forth. You also want that to be pretty even back and forth. If you're wiggling to one side more than the other, your pour is going to come out lopsided. Um, if your pitcher gets tilted and you're pouring, um, if it twists like this, your pour is going to be lopsided. 
if your pitcher rotates like this and you're pouring, it's gonna be lopsided. So you kind of have your axis there and then it kind of rotates over like that. So your goal is to keep the pitcher straight um, in this way, not twisting, not rolling, and just wiggling back and forth like so. So once you have your wiggle down, we're gonna pretend that that's my espresso again. You're pouring into the cup till it's about halfway full, mixing that together, starting in the middle of the cup. Again, I'm nice and perpendicular. And then wiggle. You're gonna push in a little bit and then pull back. So let's dump that there. So again, that motion is going to look like this. So the cup is full. I'm gonna start my wiggle in the middle of the cup and then push in a little bit, still wiggling, and then pull back and stop, and then pull through. So let's pull a shot. Um, we're actually gonna do um, a slow motion shot. You might've seen it at the start of this video, um, and we'll show you, be able to talk a little bit more as it's happening, so you can see that uh, in motion um, and I'll kind of voice over that. So here we go. All right, so you're gonna swirl your milk around, pour in the deepest part of the espresso. And then you're going to move the pitcher around while you're pouring to mix it up, get your base all the same color and fill the cup halfway full. Stop that. And then start pouring as close as you can right in the middle of the cup. And you're gonna start wiggling right away. As you can see here, you can see those lines start to form. They're gonna start wrapping around. I'm gonna push forward a little bit to help that wrap. Once it wraps, I'm gonna start pulling back while wiggling to get that second part of the design, then stop wiggling to set up a heart, and then raise the pitcher up and move it forward while pouring lightly to finish out the pour, and that is a rosetta. Uh, before we start making drinks, just want to talk about equipment we're using in case you're, uh, you have questions about it. So this is a new machine, machine from Ranchilio. Um, it's the RS1, or the Ranchilio specialty. Uh, and then we have the KRE grinder. It's their conical grinder from Eureka. Uh, and we're using the Black Cat Classic Espresso in that from Intelligentsia. Keep an eye out for a review of this machine coming soon. Um, pretty excited about it. We are really liking having it in the office, but let's make some coffee now. Alrighty, got my tamp all set there. Go into the machine. Dosing about 20 grams for this, uh, and then a pretty concentrated shot going for about 30 grams out. Um, that'll give me some good contrast and some uh, good starting points for getting some, some good contrast and latte out of it. Let me get some milk. All right, and then I'm gonna do some milk frothing here. If you have questions about milk frothing, make sure to check out our videos on milk steaming tips and tricks, uh, but here we go. I'm also using the uh, fellow Eddie frothing pitcher. This is the smaller one. And I'm pouring into the not neutral uh, cappuccino mug for this. All 
uh, and I want to have enough milk in here to complete the drink. So if it's a five ounce cup, two ounces, uh, two ounces, ounce and a half of espresso, I probably only want about five ounces of milk in here. So I'm going to pour a little bit out. All right, and here we go. So pouring in the deepest part of the espresso, halfway full. Then I'm gonna start wiggling, push in, come back, lay in that heart, and then go right on through. So that is what your Rosetta should look like once it's finally developed. Um, it should have a nice wrap, uh, and then should come back and have a heart at the top. Should be fairly centered in the cup. Uh, it should be lined up perpendicular with the handle. That way, as a right-handed person, sorry lefties, when I go to drink it, the design is facing me. And uh, that's the goal there. Uh, there's another look at it. And in a second here, we'll go ahead and do some other variations of this so you can see what that would look like. Um, one other thing I didn't mention um, is your pour speed has a lot to do with how the final design is going to look. Um, you want to find a balance between fast and slow. If your pour speed is too slow, um, that's like saying if you're only tilting the pitcher a little bit. So for example, it's a quick hot water spout. So if I'm only pouring that much water or that much milk at a time, that's a pretty slow pour speed. Um, if I'm pouring latte art, I'm probably somewhere around there. So again, if I'm pouring this fast, I'm not gonna get enough speed to fill that cup up. So I'm probably gonna be pouring somewhere more around there, um, and that's gonna help spread the design out and fill the cup up a little bit more. So I'll show you a couple pours of what it looks like at a slow speed, medium speed, and fast speed, uh, just so you can see the difference there, because that's one of the crucial elements for a Rosetta. So the slow pour velocity, it's still symmetrical and the lines are really fine, but it's pretty, pretty tight in the cup. Uh, it's gonna not fill up as much space. Um, my milk quality is pretty good, so I did get some pretty good um, like space in the cup, but uh, you'll see the difference once we go to the medium uh, and then the, the fast here. So that's the slow pour velocity. All right, y'all, that's the medium speed there. So as you can see, the lines are still pretty fine. Um, actually, if you look over here, I'm a little bit chunkier on this side than I'm on this side. So I was doing something weird there. I was holding the cup weird or something, but um, it's still got a full wrap on it. That's still the full kind of pullback there and then the heart in the top. So that's what something looks like when you pour it at a medium speed. Uh, so let's pour something pretty fast here. All right, and last but not least, um, this is what it looks like when you pour really fast. Um, so pouring really heavy into the cup. Um, this was a design that uh, won, I believe, the US Latte Art Championship a couple years back. Um, so it's a newer design. It's almost like a Slosetta, but not quite. Um, so yeah, just thicker lines, not as many, I guess, leaves in the middle of it there, and then coming up to the heart at the top. Um, the heart's a lot bigger, so it's just a more bold, a bolder design, um, a little bit newer design. So that's a fun one if you're kind of bored with rosettas and you need something new. Just try pouring a little bit faster. Uh, your cup's going to fill up fast, so make sure you rotate quickly. Otherwise, you're going to get a nice little drip down the back. So we'll do one more, and that's going to be a slow setup, and we'll go from there.
All right, so that's pretty sloppy, but hopefully you saw the difference at the start of that uh, in just how little I was wiggling the pitcher. So I was probably using like a, a medium pour speed, um, but I was just kind of going slowly back and forth to get these nice uh, thick wraps um, and then not quite as much definition in the center just because the cup's a little bit more full. But um, that's what a slow setta, kind of sloppy example of a slow setta would be. Um, that pour was kind of created by a guy who actually won another Latte Art Championship with that specific pour. Um, he's down in California. Um, his name's Nicely, one of my favorite baristas. Uh, makes great coffee. So if you're ever in Venice, make sure to check out his shop. Um, but anyways, that's a good kind of explanation of all the different rosettas and a slow setta that are out there. So hopefully you learned how to pour a rosetta and then if you're stuck where you're at or you wanted to change it up, you learned a couple different ways that you could pour some variations of a rosetta. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to come back later to check out the review of the Rinchilio Specialty or the RS1. And that'll be posted up soon and look for more videos in our Latte Art series. If you've ever thought about opening a coffee shop or wanna chat about equipment, uh, make sure to give us a call. I know some of you might be home baristas or baristas, but please give us a call. We'd love to talk with you about anything coffee related for home or commercial. We're happy to help. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.